Look at this. I just created one of the greatest comic book characters by complete accident. Oni is an ancient ancestral being. From Six five militia are just a group of ancestors. All of Oni's family are dead. Oni is a title given to, to the king. Oni has more powers. Every weapon in the ancestral universe is plant based, so you have to be always surrounded by 6'5", 250 pound dudes. Well, before I say why I did this, this is how it started. Now, this all started on TikTok months ago. I thought it would be a good idea to start telling extremely exaggerated hypotheticals in a satirical storytelling format that too many people did not understand was sad tire for some weird reason and go lie i kind of understand because i started off every video trolling like this i think i speak for all men with this video i'm yet again speaking for all men with this video in the signature phrase could you imagine walking through the mall you got could you imagine the perfect once in a million scenario you've been dreaming of since middle school could you imagine you just outside could you imagine taking a boat out on a nice summer day and then here come the overly detailed details you start to realize that you're being used as a human meat shield as the shooter makes direct eye contact with you raises his weapon and lights up your entire torso ending any chance you had of survival as you open a door in the literal hands of satan come and aggressively stroke your entire body and you start instantly sweating i'm gonna be falling so fast that i'm gonna hit the ground before she does and that's not even physically possible i'm going to break my limits and go beyond basically this is how every video would go start off calm you see a crush something tragic happens your crush puts you in harm's way she gets you killed if you want to see these full scenarios you go to my page they're all named where she can say is no part whatever explained and then there's a the spring video i do speak for all men by the way no matter how crazy my statement is I speak for all men. Even if I told y'all about the raging opioid addiction we are all gonna have by the end of next year, I'm still speaking for all. Yeah, we don't need to hear anything he's talking about. But look, since I started these scenarios, I always wanted to make a scenario where I'm some type of African warlord with Black Panther's accent that's surrounded by an army of buff niggas. Wait, hold, hold on, pause. Not like that. And then the scenario would involve me enacting extreme levels of violence. But I never had a reason to make it because most of the scenarios were based on the worst thing your crush could possibly do to you. Until this man right here decided to air out one of the darkest moments of his childhood completely unprovoked. I mean, I hope this is childhood. I'm thinking this is my moment. I can just reply to his comment and create a scenario where I get revenge for what his dad said to him using the African warlord format I was just thinking about. And once I made that video, everyone in the comments started airing out their entire traumatic family history. So I can make the same type of video about it that I made for the other dude. That's exactly what I was waiting for and that's exactly what I did. And it ended up starting this whole African warlord series. And there's about 10 of these videos. So I'm going to take a clip from each video and I'm going to mash it up to make it seem like it's one. Because if I played all of them, we'd be here for like 45 minutes. Dad said that to you? All right, this was going to happen to him. It's going to be a dark, rainy, stormy Thursday night. Your dad comes home from a long day at work with a six pack of beer in his hand. He walks. One light is going to cut back on. It's going to be you standing there looking down at him with anger in your eyes. He's going to do a double take and jump up like, what's your problem? You're going to run in the house, slam the door and say, Dad, I still have burn marks on my body for what you did to me when I was seven. He says, I don't care. It wasn't even that much. Stop crying keep slamming my door like that and i'll pin you down and do it again and i say you are going to do what if she does what and he says this is my house show yourself i step out the shadows of three of my six five militia the other two come from behind all right look i thought it would be funny to pop out with like the dumbest fit i could think of and i did this in like every video so i'm gonna put a compilation of that right now i got on a dollar store spider-man costume undersized dirty beat up crocs no socks a fake gucci belt while sipping a tahitian treat from the bottle he stepped out the shadows of my six five militia with high water jeans on fake easies with a built-in speaker playing nba young boy and what song was playing it was free d dog i got on a sleeveless emoji hoodie oversized cargo shorts lean in chelsea boots and knee-high angry birds compression socks on and i say i got on a green ski mask a see-through fishnet tank top and thigh-high cowboy boots Hey yo! All right, thigh high cowboy boots is crazy. I don't know why I said that. That that didn't happen. He starts getting wide eyed and says, "How'd you get in? What do you want?" I throw the bottle down the stairs and say, "You permanently desecrate the child's body. She throws up in pain. Thanks for an apology. And you still show no remorse for your own. Throw him down the stairs until his body is squashed like an insect. Bring him back up and hold him like Simba on Pride Rock and drop him legs first off the ledge instead of the stairs. You hear loud cracking noises as he hits the floor." He at the bottom of the stairs yelling, Oh no, my legs! And then I say, Drag him to the street. Bring the truck around. A matte black Ford F-150 comes and hits the corner. The truck stops three feet away from his body. The truck starts moving forward, slowly crushing his lower body. He's screaming in pain. We don't need it! And I stand over him and I say, If I have to come back, the 
These roads will be painted with the blood from your head. I snap my fingers and disappear. Hey, look, look, hear me out. I don't know why I was making these videos. I don't know why y'all was watching these videos. But I tell you something right now, all y'all going to jail, me included. We're going to federal prison and we're doing at least 10 years minimum. It's no reason you should be enjoying these videos or watching them consistently. It's, what's even happening? What is this? Now back to business. There was a lot of comments that didn't get a video. So let's go through some of those right now. Let me show the people that don't understand what's going on, how bad these comments were. My old foster parents. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me get a little nice background going. All right, there we go. My old foster parents pushed me and beat me into three concussions before the age of five. Their names were Teresa and David. Three concussions before five? Bro, this is attempted murder. You didn't even specify the years. This could have been two years old, one years old, three years old. What age we talking? Were you even conscious? <laughs> After the age, you, I, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing else. Double government drop is insane. I don't think you might be the only person to drop not one, but two governments in the same comment. I know you hate them niggas. My dad beat me up and broke my PS3, and he has 10 girlfriends, and he does drugs. Bro, who is your father? Andrew Tate? Dan Bilzerian? 10 girlfriends? He got 10 girlfriends and you want a PS3. This better be from like 2010. If this is recent incidents, listen, somebody need to get put in a dungeon. He need to get locked up somewhere that he ain't gonna see the light of day ever again. He does drugs, got 10 girlfriends, and beats kids. Super terrorist, lock him up. 165 years, 6 months, 2 days, 8 nights. A man came up to my house and called my mom a fat, disgusting bitch and got up in her face and flipped me off. Am I worthy of helping? No. What type of hood crackhead incident is this? This sounds like a regional problem. Where are you located? This was either in Detroit or the Bronx. No other options, but you need to move quickly. This what type? Man, listen. When I was seven, my mom would get rusted nails out the shed and drill them into my toes and make me tap dance to different songs. All right, look, what's going on with your parents, y'all? She had you shucking and jiving with rusted nails lodged inside your toes. That's what you're trying to tell me right now? Why is everybody's parents committing war crimes in their house. Why do they hate y'all this much? What are y'all doing? Why is everybody prepubescent? Bro, this is getting, this is getting scary. This is the kind of revenge fantasy we all had in the alcohol bath after reliving ancestral traumas at the hands of our parents. Who is we? I don't know who we is. You need to find that man and put him before a jury because clearly he, he don't got the right idea. I don't know who we is. Revenge fantasy. I was with you a little bit. Alcohol bath. It's over. What's the alcohol bath? I, I, do I even want to know? What's going on here, my brother? What I will tell you is this. We have all had that one moment where you got beat and then you went into the bathroom and started punching air, thinking of blowing up the spot. We all have been there. Now it's a we. We. Yes, a collective. Us. But once my stepdad got me. <laughs> okay, alright, okay. My uncle stabbed two burning hot knives into my feet. I now have a giant hole in each of my feet big enough for my hand to fit into. Alright. What did you do that provoked this reaction? Did you get caught violently molesting squirrels or something? What were you doing? Your uncle stabbed you twice? and lit the knife on fire? Where was the rest of the family? What is going on here? Did you ever get medical treatment? Why is the hole still there? How do you know you can fit your hand into it? All right, bro, I'm, bro, how many more we got left? My mom threw me down the stairs and shot me with a BB gun and then threatened to run me over with a semi truck if I don't stop asking her for food. Look, I know y'all lying, so I'm just gonna tell you one more now. This whole house about big, fat, hungry, greedy, violent, just, just get rid of the whole thing. Get rid of the whole house. All y'all going to jail. Everyone is doing 10 years minimum. No due process, no questions will be asked. How much food do you gotta ask for before somebody threatens your life? You know what happened to me? My stepdad threw me out my own window and threw my PS4 on my arms and made me have a bionic arm. Bro, what? Does your dad work for Hydra? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> nigga think he... My dad was beating my mom when I was five, and the sad part is I still remember it. And she said, stop, you're scaring the kids, and he said, no, you are. <laughs> okay, look, I'm not... I don't, it, that sounds like a real story, so I don't want to laugh myself, <laughs> but just know that I was, ah, uh, said too much. All right, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm not going to respond for any more questions unless I see something crazy. My stepdad hung me by my toes from my top bunk's bed frame for hours when I was four. My great grandpa touched me and beat me with his old metal skeleton belt and cuts my veins out and surgically puts them back in. Please help me. My mom said that she would have rather birthed a heavily disabled 30-year-old than have me. 
My dad punched me seven times in the side of my head and locked me in a room until I promised not to tell anybody. My stepmom discriminates every person for anything, including things she does. Bro, wait, hold on. Why is Ashton back? So at first your uncle stabbed you in your foot with a burning hot knife, and now your stepmom is a discriminatory hypocrite? Bro, what's going on in this house, bro? Ashton, are you good, Ashton? At least he ain't dropped no governments like the first person. My dad burned all my clothes because I'm on that bike too much. My dad is a highly skilled ninja that tortured me and pushed me harder than my body can take. My stepdad pulled me by the hair out of a van and beat me within an inch of my life. My frog turned into a gorilla. Bro, what? Where do you know where you at right now? You can walk into the wrong set. Hey, but I get it though, because I didn't see my dog turn into a snake. Oh my God. Oh my God, he's back. What, bro, Ashton. Ashton, 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 what's going on, Ashton? Why are you going through more? Why is there another parent? Did he just unlock a new parent? Bro, where are you at? Why is this house breeding super terrorists, bro? Who does stuff like this? What were you doing? You know what? That's enough questions. I'm done. Let's get to the story. Okay, this is the most important part of the video because I always told myself at the beginning of this African warlord series that I did not like saying I did this, I did that. If I kept doing that, people are gonna start thinking I'm some type of vigilante in real life that actually goes to these people parents' house and does these actions. Because trust me, a lot of people do not understand satire. I still don't understand why. Maybe because it's a lot of younger people and old people, but I still don't understand why it still just felt a little egotistical and narcissistic to be doing all that. And I wanted to create different characters and storylines. I had soundtracks and themes and everything, but I couldn't put none of that out since I'm still using myself as the character. So I chose a name and made a video. For all the people that watch the African Warlord videos, I know I said I was gonna choose a name for the African Warlord, but listen, I'm choosing the Oni as the name. Now, I was finally at where I was trying to get. You see, we got lore now and real stories being told, but I'll tell you right now, this was the worst decision ever. Why? That doesn't matter. All you need to know is that we finally went from me saying I showed up, I pulled up, I did this, I did that, to... And the Oni says, one of the Oni militia, the Oni walks over to him and then the Oni says, and the Oni says, and the Oni steps out the darkness. Now, finally, let's get into this lore. I didn't post the lore on my page in chronological order because I was still coming up with it on the spot, but I'm gonna do that here. Now let's start with the most important question. Who is the Oni? The Oni is an ancient ancestral being from another unnamed universe, but you can just call it the ancestral universe for now. He's still human to some extent, but he's what we would call superhuman from our universe. Like how Kryptonians like Superman are just enhanced humans is like that. But Oni is a title given to the king of the nightshade. Since the nightshade is sentient and it has a mind of its own, it has to have a being that it listens to more than anybody else. There's other beings that can hand been the nightshade but let's say you threw it at Oni trying to damage Oni would just put his hand up and it would stop in front of him like he's the master because he is is there another Oni does he have a son does he have a daughter does he have a wife does he have a kid does he have a pet does he have anything like what does he have where's Oni's family what is he I got this question so many times but look all of Oni's family are dead all of them every single one of them he's the last one in his immediate family that's left he had a whole lot of brothers sisters aunts uncles cousins dogs cats yeah they all gone all of them. they're gone done it's, it's over the reason is because of the nightshade and the Oni's refusal to have kids. Now look, the nightshade works as an anti-aging serum when it's in your body. So if you injected it into your body, it would almost double your lifespan since it kills any illnesses that would cause a natural death, like heart failure or a cold. Now your body still does age, but very slow. Since the Oni has a lot of nightshade flowing through him, he's been alive for hundreds of years. That's why I said he's ancient in one of the lore videos. Now you're probably asking, why didn't he just inject his family with the nightshade too? Well, he literally did, but they're not the Oni, aka the king of the nightshade. So nightshade isn't as effective on them as it is on him. Plus, it's a super rare substance. Not everybody can just have gallons running through them like the Oni can. Now, they did expand their lifespan by a good amount, but he outlived all of them. So, yes, he did watch his entire family die. Nightshade this, nightshade that, nightshade, 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 nightshade. What is the nightshade? The nightshade is an ancestral sentient bioweapon that was originally created to be able to heal people from any physical condition quicker than any modern medicine known to man. Nightshade, when it's weaponized, it works like napalm. It's gooey and sticky, and it spreads and burns as hot as lava, maybe even hotter. Plus, it's sentient it has some form of intelligence so it can literally chase you down if he programs it to do so since the nightshade is still a healing serum it can heal him because it's flowing through him like white blood cells so he has a healing factor which also means he can't get sick from any earthly illnesses like if he ever donated blood to somebody with stage four cancer they'd be fully healed within minutes okay but how did i come up with this where did the idea come from it all started with this video when i said 
It's a thick, glowing purple liquid floating in there. She sees it and says, What is that? Please, wait, let me explain. And stick the syringe in her arm. She starts shaking instantly, yelling out, I can't feel my legs, I can't feel my legs. My people untie her and push her on the ground. She coughing and wheezing, trying to get up, but her legs ain't working. When I first mentioned it in this video, my thought process was obviously on various torture methods. So I'm thinking, what if I injected this abusive parent with something similar to a drug like heroin and it just turned their legs off as a punishment? Because like I said, the punishment had to correlate with the comment. Then I reused the same idea in another video in a different way. Then one comes behind me with a bucket filled with a thick purple liquid and I step back to my people tip the caution over and pour it on his chest. The liquid starts jumping around violently, sizzling, burning through his skin. So I'm thinking, what if I just turned this into some type of supernatural poison? Of course, I had to get a name, so I chose Nightshade, which is an actual poisonous plant that comes in the color purple, so it checked out. Now for the next most common question, who are these 6'5", 250 pound militiamen that keep getting mentioned? Like, face immediately when he see five of his 6'5", 270 pound militia behind him looking at him crazy. He starts walking towards Oni and the 5'6", 5, 5, 250 pound militia behind him. He walks out with his 5'6", 5, 5, 250 pound militia. So it's the Oni standing there in front of 5'6", 5, 5, 250 pound men. He's always surrounded by 6'5", 250 pound dudes. Well look, that's kind of self-explanatory. He's a warlord. He gotta have a strong army to manhandle some of these parents. They're not from the family Oni's from, but they're still strong. So they're basically like hired gun from other families to be security for stronger families. They don't really have any skill besides being strong, so they're just used for muscle. That's it. They're just hired gun. That's it. It doesn't get deeper than that. Now for these outfits. The outfits kept getting crazier. Here's some of those from the Oni series. He got on a rainbow cardigan, football shoulder pads, glittery zebra striped skinny jeans, and yellow Pikachu rain boots. Oni standing there in the dark, shirtless, with pink Viking helmet on, skin tight Lululemon yoga pants, and oversized glow in the dark SpongeBob hiking boots. He got on a Fortnite banana skin with the head cut out, oversized dark green alligator dress shoes, knee high Elsa socks, and the Michael Jackson sequin glove. On the other hand, he caught it with. He got on baby group themed leggings, oversized light up roller skates, a fedora, and a fake Moncler bubble coat with no undershirt. He got on a unicorn mask with the face cut off, rainbow glitter Ugg boots, shin long fur shorts, and a denim vest with no undershirt. Now I had to come up with a reason why he wears these ridiculous outfits, so this is what I said. The reason why the only fits be so crazy is because when he snaps, he actually travels through an ancestral portal, which is basically instant transmission in Earth time to get to where he's trying to go. But since it takes so much power to transport five different 250 pound grown men and himself, it literally randomizes everything he has on. He could come through the portal with a good fit because like I said, it's random. But most of the time he comes through with the dumbest thing you've ever heard or seen in your life. Now here's a visual representation. Really All right, look, I almost ended this whole series without giving him a single good fit. But then I remembered right before I was about to end it that the homie Mark Madison told me I got to give him a good fit. I got to make him fly. So that's exactly what I did. He's wearing glowing blue and purple ancestral robes, a jet black tuxedo jacket made from the finest ancestral wool. His ancestral crown was seven different super rare gemstones and iced out chain drowning in blue cashmere sapphires glistening tailored black ancestral trousers with a glowing dark purple satin stripe down both sides a pink diamond studded watch and ancestrally handcrafted black oxford shoes made from genuine alligator leather after about 20 videos of the dumbest fits ever you already know the comments went crazy Alright, now back to the lore. One of the most consistently asked questions was, oh, does Oni have a rival? So I said, he doesn't have a rival because he's the Oni. I keep seeing this comment. Everyone wants there to be an anti-Oni or some something like that. That would be so surface level because then there would basically be no Oni. Oni doesn't exist. 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 Oni she's the strongest. That's basically how the Oni is. You need multiple people to stop it. Being the strongest in your family and then having a rival, that just doesn't make that good of a story compared to creating a multi-universal threat like Thanos or Kang. Unless he's like a teenager like Naruto vs Sasuke. But even that wasn't better than Naruto vs the Uchiha clan. It's like that one Joel and B quote. Yeah, this one right here. This is basically how it is in that universe with all the other people that are strong. All right, on to the next part. Look, I was describing some of Oni's powers. Somebody asked me if he has any more powers and I said something that triggered more 
four questions that I did not want to answer, but of course I answered it anyway. Oni is basically half an earthbender, technically a plant bender, because he could pull a tree out the ground by just touching it and telling it to come out the ground. But let's say he's just walking around the forest. The grass, the trees, and the plants would just start leaning in his direction from his ancestral aura alone. Ancestrals in base form are two times stronger than earthly humans. You see how I said base form? Yeah, I should have never said that because everybody's like, bro, base form? I told you about the other, other forms. Yeah, the form. 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 Which is cool. I wanted to explain these things, but I felt like I was rushing the story. So I had to think of something. And this is what I thought of. Yes, the Oni has a base form and a Super Saiyan form. He obviously always in base form, but when he's in ancestral mode, his skin gets tight, his bones get hard, the nightshade starts moving around the inside of his body quicker, speeding up his healing factor. It starts floating around him too. He can fly without using the nightshade to hold him up. When he's in ancestral ancestral form he could lift up the entire central park and flip it over if he wanted to or he could throw it and take out half of brooklyn for visual learners this is central park in new york city imagine a nice summer day you walk out the deli with a bacon egg and cheese it's glistening in the sun you about to take a bite then it get dark out of nowhere you look up and the entire park is flying directly at you the nightshade burns even hotter glows brighter heals quicker his skin gets so tight that you would need a chainsaw to do the same damage as a dull kitchen knife his eyes roll back and turn white with a bluish tint when you get close Close to him, you hear like 10 people whispering unintelligible words. Yeah, those, those the ancestors guiding him through the fight. At this point, if you was a human fighting him, you would need an entire army blasting him from every direction to give yourself a chance. This has to be the most sexually charged soundbite I have ever created. His eyes rolling in the back of his head, 10 people whispering in his ear, guiding him through it? No. You need an entire army blasting him from every direction? And I said some crazy stuff earlier. And I wasn't the only one that peeped it either, which is funny because they asked me to make one of those cap cut, slow, sped up, Don Pollo, distorted audio sound clips. And that's exactly what I did. In his base form, he's really not that hard to kill. His skin can still be penetrated. But when he's in ancestral mode, his skin gets tight, his bones get hard. At this point, if you was a human fighting him, you would need an entire army blasting him from every direction to give yourself a chance. Now let's get back to this lore. Ever since I started talking about Oni being able to go into some beyond mode and some ancestor mode or some Super Saiyan mode, I triggered all the Goku fans who were asking the same questions from the start, but it kicked up over this time. I kept seeing over and over. And let me tell you something right now. As a proud member of the Goku sexuals, I tell you right now, nobody can beat Goku. Let's take two seconds to read this scripture right here. Moment of silence. Now let's get back to this lore. I ain't gonna lie, in the earlier videos, I messed up again. I overstepped and I said, There's a lot, cause he's the only. He still can't create it from his bare hands though. Only one being in existence can do that. But that's another story for another day. I should have never said this cause they kept asking about it later on and then I had to answer it and come up with something. Which is cool. That's what I wanted to do. But like I said, it was too early. It came right after the Super Saiyan thing. So I mean, it kind of worked out. But then I had to create a Broly level character. And here it go. It was this one ancestral child that was purely chaotic in nature from birth. When this kid was born, his ancestral connection was so strong that it almost shifted the entire energy of the universe so much so that even the ancestors felt it they all decided that the kid had to get eliminated before he got too strong they probably think like what oh, how did you kill the kid this is not earth if somebody gets too strong in the ancestral universe they become unstoppable you can't stop them no one's beating them. and then some other people are like later on oh bro the god of nightshade better not come back oh the god of nightshade when he comes back when is he coming back they never said he eliminated him no bro they killed him they killed him with hammers they destroyed his body He's not with us anymore. His days are over. I must not understand what eliminated means. He's gone. He ain't coming back. Unless there was a ancestral being that was able to tap into the ancestral universe and pull his ancestral energy out the ancestral universe and recreate his body through pure ancestral energy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that that's canon, but hey, listen, I guess we'll never know for now. Now that the lore is over, we can get into the actual story. Now look, all these videos are like four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. So I'm gonna summarize them as fast as I can, making it as simple as possible to understand without playing the videos.
In the ancestral universe, all weapons are plant-based, and people have to find specific plants and engineer them for weapon creation similar to an RPG game. Two ancestral botanists were conducting research on plants one day when they stumbled upon a seemingly ordinary plant. By accident, they cut this plant, and to their surprise, it emitted a glow unlike the other plant. Intrigued by this discovery, they took the glowing plant back to the lab for examination. Despite their efforts, they couldn't identify any healing properties in the plant's DNA initially. Returning to the lab the next morning, they found that the plant had regenerated, as it contradicted their previous findings of no healing or damage abilities. To test its properties, one of the botanists cut themselves and then placed their hand on the glowing part of the plant, which miraculously healed the injury. They started looking at each other, and then it became clear to them that they had discovered something of immense generational significance inside this glowing plant. In the beginning, all families in the Oni's universe lived peacefully, with large ancestral families resembling entire populations, so one family could be equal to Nigeria from our world. Two ancestral botanists from Oni's family discovered the nightshade plant, which held generational significance. They kept this discovery within their own family. After years of research, they successfully engineered an active serum from the nightshade plant with potential to change the world. News of the serum leaked, causing high demand amongst the people with illnesses and sick family members. Families worldwide started demanding information about the serum. The family decided to leak the information to appear as if they had just discovered it. The nightshade's potency diminishes with use, requiring a large supply for regeneration. The family hesitated to share it due to the difficulty of mass production. They argued that it should be there since it grew on their land, but other families were concerned about their growing power. Oni's family started creating a market for the serum, leading to a golden age, but causing tensions at the same time. Other families grew angry due to long waits for restocks and rising prices resulting in inflation. Oni's family believed the world was becoming lazy and over-reliant on instant healing neglecting traditional health rituals. Some families deny using nightshade completely, while others continued healthy practices. As the world became lazier, anger grew over nightshade shortages, leading to conflicts and demands for increased production and lower prices from Oni's family. Oni's family refused to comply, igniting the nightshade war. Oni's family refused to increase nightshade production and lower its cost, causing frustration among other families that relied on nightshade for their health. Most families decided to conspire against the Oni's family, except for those who either didn't believe in using the nightshade at all or couldn't afford it. Collectively, these families threatened Oni's family, warning them that if they didn't meet their demands, they would invade and take control of their country, effectively enslaving them. Due to having the strongest military in the ancestral universe because of the golden age and unlimited access to nightshade, Oni's family refused to back down and challenge the others to come and take it from them. Oni's family sought out allies offering access to the nightshade during battle and agreed that the losing side would lose access to nightshade permanently. The families who hadn't used nightshade before agreed to join Oni's family, as did some families who couldn't afford it. A massive battle took place at the center of the world, with Oni's family's greatest fighters facing off against those from the other families. However, Oni's family severely underestimated the anger and desperation of the other families and overestimated their own abilities. Putting up a good fight, Oni's family eventually lost the war due to betrayal from their own allies, who switched sides after experiencing the power of the nightshade during combat. Oni's family was outnumbered 10 to 1 and suffered heavy losses, with most of their strongest fighters being killed in battle. When they attempted to retreat and surrender, the other families continued the massacre anyway and began executing them cruelly. Oni's family, devastated by the loss of their loved ones, fell into a deep depression, with 95% of their strongest warriors lost in a single day. Their military power was completely destroyed, leaving them vulnerable to be taken over by the other families. While the other families didn't violate raid the country due to the presence of children, which they do not play about. They essentially sent Oni's family into slavery. Oni's family's sole purpose became mass-producing nightshade, while they were treated as barely equal to, if not lower than animals. During all these events, Oni is still a child. One day, ancestral scientists in the ancestral version of Japan were studying the nightshade plant, trying to understand its unique properties. In this universe, plant DNA could reveal a plant's capabilities, but nightshade DNA remained unreadable due to limited technology. Oni's family, since they were forced to distribute the nightshade, couldn't care less about studying it, so they knew nothing about it besides the fact that it can heal and it grows on their land. The Japanese scientists invented a new machine capable of reading plant DNA in more detail. They started learning how to enhance plant strength and healing abilities, but just focused on decoding nightshade's DNA. Despite the technological improvement, reading nightshade DNA remained challenging. After weeks of effort, they decoded it and discovered nightshade had two properties, healing and burning. The presence of two contradicting properties puzzled them, as nightshade has no instances of burning anyone ever. They speculated that the nightshade's properties could be manually switched, given its central nervous system. To access the nervous system, they needed an ancestral with a strong connection. Numerous tests with different ancestrals were conducted worldwide, but none could switch the nightshade's property to burn instead of heal. To prevent mass panic, they kept this top secret experiment hidden, naming it the Oni Project. 
A child named Obuni Oluwafemi, aka John, was born in the ancestral version of South Africa during the pre-Nightshade era. In this world, your strength ceiling depends on your ancestral connection at birth, and Oni's connection initially seemed weak. However, it began to grow rapidly over time, surpassing others' connections, which went unnoticed due to low expectations. Oni's family typically had the strongest ancestral connections at birth. Oni himself lived a peaceful life, focused on training, supporting his family, reading, and meditating in the forest. The Japanese ancestrals revealed that the Nightshade had sentience and destructive potential, but only someone with an exceptional ancestral connection could control it. To find this individual, they made the Oni Project known to governments worldwide, testing their strongest citizens. However, they couldn't find anyone capable of controlling the Nightshade. Years passed without success until they decided to run an average ancestral connection test for every nation, including Oni's family, which was still in slavery. To their surprise, Oni's family showed abnormal ancestral connection levels, particularly among the children, who had experienced a tenfold increase in connection due to their oppression and meditation. World leaders grew concerned about the potential power of these children, fearing that they would seek retribution for their suffering when they grew up. They secretly planned to eliminate all the children to prevent a future uprising. A team resembling the ancestral Navy SEALs was sent to Oni's family, causing chaos and violence in the streets as they snatched away children from their parents and killed them. Oni, a teenager around 16 years old, heard the screams and ran home, finding his parents injured and the army taking children. He tried to intervene, but the situation escalated, leading to the injury of his parents and the confiscation of all the nightshade that his family owned. Oni was attacked by the soldiers and his attempt to retrieve the nightshade was met with violence. As Oni was being attacked, the nightshade in the city started vibrating and flying towards him. In a moment of rage, he unleashed his power, causing the nightshade to respond to him. Oni began using his newfound power to defend himself and his family, burning the attackers and causing mass panic among the soldiers. He fought off the soldiers, chasing him away and leaving destruction everywhere. Oni's display of power led to the realization from the soldiers that he was the one that they had been looking for, the Oni. After defeating the soldiers, Oni healed his parents and exacted revenge on all the rest of the attackers in the city. The world leaders who have been watching the chaos unfold realized their grave mistake and feared the consequences. Oni gained control over the city, forcing leaders to recognize his authority and establish a century-long empire under his rule. Oni declared himself king of the ancestral universe at the age of 17 with control over everything, destroying the democracy everyone was used to. As Oni's empire grew, resistance and attempts to overthrow his rule emerged, leading to the beginning of the War of the Ancestral Universe. Decades after Oni established the Oni Empire, discontent brewed among several families who opposed his rule and the distribution of the equal balance in the ancestral universe. Outside of his family, Oni ruled with an iron fist, causing frustration and discontent among the universe. The conflict stemmed from the family's desire to take control of the nightshade back from Oni's family, further escalating tensions. Oni being nearly unbeatable in direct combat presented an almost impossible challenge to those who thought to overthrow him. In an attempt to gain an advantage, these families deployed ancestral physicists and botanists to create a powerful weapon of mass destruction. Similar to the 1940s Manhattan Project in the USA, these scientists who had their own version of Oppenheimer worked tirelessly to develop a weapon using a combination of various plants and nightshade. The act of combining different attack and poison-based plants with nightshade was strictly prohibited in the ancestral universe due to the extreme dangers involved. The challenge in creating such a weapon was that the plant combinations often resulted in violent reactions and self-destruction. However, with the unique properties of the nightshade, which could both heal and attack, they were able to harm harness its regenerative abilities. By carefully mixing specific plants with nightshade, they created a weapon of mass destruction. This weapon caused a rapid series of violent reactions within microseconds thanks to the heat generated by the nightshade. The nightshade's ability to continuously regenerate and spread made it incredibly destructive. To use this weapon, it had to be kept inside a warhead to contain and charge its power. The plant energies trapped within the warhead fought to escape while the nightshade constantly regenerated, creating immense pressure. Leaving the weapon armed for an extended period of time would cause it to explode so it had to be prepared 24 hours before you use it. This weapon was named the Eterna. Eterna, a weapon that's similar to an ancestral nuke is introduced. The attackers demand that Oni give up his power and restore democracy, threatening to attack if he doesn't comply. The attackers pretend that they'll wait next year, but secretly plan to attack the next day. Discussions within the attacking group focus on whether to use the destructive Eterna and its potential casualties. A jealous military general obsessed with defeating Oni is introduced. He secretly killed his own father because his father wanted to stop him from using the Eterna. The military generals agree that if they start losing, they'll use the Eterna. The next day, the generals launch a full-scale assault, catching Oni's family completely off guard. Oni, completely caught guard by the attack, has to join his soldiers on the battlefield, since they were limited in allies. They put up too good of a fight, leading the leader of the second strongest family, the same military general who killed his father, to secretly order the release of the Eterna, which is launched toward the city. Oni tries to control the Eterna, but it contains a mix of dangerous plants, including Nightshade, making it uncontrollable. Oni creates a protective wall 
wall of nightshade to shield the battlefield from Eterna's explosion. Oni drops the wall and looks at the city, which is now in ruins, and is overwhelmed by the destruction. The attackers look at the general who's responsible for the destruction, but he tries to justify his actions. Oni finds his family and others dead, leading to an emotional breakdown. Overwhelmed by grief and anger, Oni taps into his nightshade power, entering a powerful transformation, almost Super Saiyan level. His eyes start rolling in the back of his head. He starts to hear whispers. The nightshade covers the entire city, turning it purple. Oni starts floating and flies up without support from the nightshade. Using his new powers, Oni flies off towards another country, leaving the battlefield. The military bases start panicking as they can't track the Oni's movement and realize the gravity of their action. Oni fires a massive purple beam at the attacker's base, causing chaos. Oni takes down the attackers with ease, using nightshade to eliminate all of them. Oni confronts the guilty general and tortures him for 30 minutes, leaving him alive. Oni heals those he harmed and drags the attackers back to his city. The attackers are forced to rebuild the city, and once they're done, they're executed, except for the general who had to serve a life sentence. Oni learned from this and changed his ruling style, becoming less oppressive over the other families. Nobody dared to revolt against the Oni ever again after these events. Oni eventually got bored and learned to open portals to other universes, particularly Earth, a very troubled place. And that's the rough draft story of the Oni. Thank you for listening. Shh, you speak too much.